I think it's finally time to do the triple bypass in my Model 1 Sega Genesis. In my last video about my Model 1, I showed you guys how to lift the subcarrier pin in hopes that it would get rid of my jail bars. In the case of my VA6 Model 1 Genesis, it didn't really seem to help. Today, I'm going to replace all the capacitors and show you guys how to do a triple bypass in a Model 1 Sega Genesis. Let's jump over to the bench and I'll show you how to do it. I've gone ahead and opened the console and took the top shield off. Look at how many capacitors there are on this thing. And if you think this is all there is, wait till you see under there. That is a ton. Let's keep taking the console apart. Don't forget the two screws for the voltage regulators. Oh look, and there's one more screw under the headphone jack. And I forgot the cartridge slot too is screwed in. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this second headphone jack that I added because I won't be using it anymore. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. If you're curious to what that was, I was just tapping off of the headphone jack output from the front here and then just running it to the back of the console. Now that that's taken care of, we still have to figure out how to remove this voltage regulator heatsink. If you look closely here, you'll see that there's one here, one here. These are rivets. They're actually keeping this heatsink attached to the PCB. The only way to remove this heatsink now is to drill out those rivets. I've got a 3 30 seconds drill bit. Let's go ahead and see if we can drill them out. Okay, I got one done here. Just be really careful. These kind of get stuck in there. Be careful if you're gonna do this on your console. Mission accomplished. All right, with that out of the way, we can finally start doing the capacitor replacements. I'm gonna be using my desoldering gun for this. It's gonna make this job a lot easier. I'm gonna replace each capacitor one at a time and then replace it with the same value capacitor from my console five capacitor kit. There's probably some documentation somewhere that has all of these capacitors labeled with what values they are if you wanted to just remove them all at once and replace them. But I'm just gonna do them one at a time. Even though it might be slower, it'll be easier for me to keep track of the values. Okay, just about 30 capacitors later, I've replaced most of the capacitors all over the board. Now you'll notice that I didn't replace these ones here. We'll get back to these in a little bit, but this is actually going to be for the audio. So we are gonna be desoldering these, but just not right now. Now for my triple bypass install, I am gonna be installing the Genesis 2 style mini DIN. We are gonna be following Bob's guide for this part, so we're gonna to have to remove this RF jack here. Let's have a look at what needs to happen to remove this thing. Looks like we have to desolder these three pins here. Looks like there's four or five big pins that we have to desolder to. I probably won't be able to do that with my desoldering gun. I'll probably use my handheld solder sucker. Add some fresh solder everywhere. Okay, let's see if we can try to wiggle this thing out. Okay, that's pretty good. Looks like it was just these three points here and then these three pins back here. Okay, now if we flip the board back over again, but the idea is we're gonna take this Genesis 2 style port and add it to the place where the RF port was so that port sticks out of the hole where the RF jack was. I'm gonna put the board back into the case for a second. This is gonna help me line this part up better. We need to scrape some of the solder mask off so that the top of the Genesis 2 port actually can solder to the ground plane underneath that RF port. I've got this scratch pen. Let's see how far that's gonna get me. If you're going to do this in your own console, please use one of these tools because this is actually a lot of fun. Okay, I'm not exactly sure how we're supposed to do this. Maybe I'll tin the top of this port and then I'll tin the copper here and then I guess I'll just heat it all up. I turned my soldering iron up a little bit so that will have a little more power. All right, I don't think we need a ton of solder, but let's see how this goes. We just need enough to attach this port where it goes here. And just be mindful of how you're gonna line it up with the port on the outside here.
I think that's about as good as I'm gonna get without a hot air station. Not 100% lined up here, but now that I think about it, the Model 1 port is not lined up either, so I think this is pretty good. And I tested it with the cable, and the cable fits in there good. With this out of the way, let's turn our attention to this VDP. My Model 1 has a subcarrier pin lifted. I think I wanna go ahead and put that back before I start on the RGB lines over here. I think all I really need to do is put this pin back where it should go. and then add some fresh solder. With the subcarrier pins put back, the next thing that we have to do is lift the RGB pins on the VDP. Lifting these RGB pins is how we're gonna bypass the stock Genesis RGB output. In order to find out which of these pins are for the RGB, we're gonna have to visit our new best friend, the Console 5 Tech Wiki. Over on the Tech Wiki, go ahead and search the model of your VDP. So in my case, mine is 315-5313. Then you wanna look for the section that says linear RGB output, and that's gonna tell you which pins on this VDP we have to lift. On my console, I'm gonna have to lift 27 28 and 29. All we have to do is find those pins on the VDP, heat them up with our soldering iron, and use an X-Acto knife to lift them up. After this is done, I'm just gonna go over the pads underneath those pins just to make sure that they're not bridging. Next, we're gonna to need to solder these 4.7 microfarad capacitors around the ground and voltage pins that surround these RGB pins. Double check the tech wiki for your VDP, but on mine, there is a ground and voltage pin that surrounds these RGB pins. And even better, there are these test points. One is here and one is over here that we can solder this capacitor to. The legs in this capacitor are not far enough apart to actually span those two vias. There's a huge trace right here. So I'm gonna scrape some mask off there and we're gonna bridge this test via on the right and the part that we're gonna scrape the solder mask to on the left. So I scratched that solder mask over here. Now I'm just going to pre-tin both sides here and get this sticky capacitor on there. With that ground spot tinned, let's go ahead and solder the capacitor to it. I'm gonna turn it and solder the other side. All right, we're gonna rotate it this way. We're pretty much gonna do the same thing over here as we did over here, connect a capacitor between two points. Bob says that he adds it to pin 54, which according to the tech wiki is digital VDD. So you might wanna verify if you have a different VDP, what pin your VDD is on. And my console 54 is this pin right there and it needs to go on this little via right here. This via doesn't really line up very well in order to get me a good angle to solder to that one pin. So I'm just gonna scrape some of the solder mask off here. All right, that's a little better. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of solder. All right, I'm gonna to try to line this capacitor up so that it's at a little bit of an angle on the other side so that when we solder it to that other wire, it'll be right there. I'm doing my best to try to angle the capacitor so that it only touches pin 54 in there. Let's see if I can solder just to pin 54. Wow, okay, I'm not sure how I did it, but I ended up making it work. So I have the capacitor connected to pin 54, but none of the other pins on either side. Now we pretty much have everything that we need to hook up the RGB lines to the mod itself. The mod just goes right over the pins of the DIN, but if you try to put this over here, you'll notice that the old DIN port actually hits the mod and it doesn't let it sit flush. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this old port just so the mod could fit better, and I don't really wanna get confused because this shouldn't have RGB coming out of it anymore. So let's go ahead and remove that. It has some pretty chunky pins down here, but I think we can desolder it with my desoldering gun. All right, let's see if we can heat this up and wiggle it off. Whoa, look at that thing. Pretty big. All right, now if we flip it back over, now we're gonna have plenty of room to mount this mod. 
Go ahead and slip the mod over pins and push straight down. I forgot before we want to do that, take a look at the back of the mod itself. Written on here are in some instructions for the jumper settings. It tells us which jumpers that we're gonna have to solder on the other side of the board. So if you have a model one between VA zero and 6.5, you're gonna solder jumper one. But if you have a VA seven, then you're gonna solder two and these other jumpers settings here. The numbers correspond to these gain settings here on the mod. So we're gonna have to solder solder one on both sides. All right, now we can mount the mod. All right, with the mod how you want it, you can go ahead and solder the rest. With the mod in place, we can finally go ahead and start wiring it up. We're gonna start with the RGB on the right side of the mod here. We're gonna need a five wire piece of ribbon cable, maybe eight or nine inches. I've gone ahead and separated the wires kind of like this so that they're facing out this way because this is the way the wires are gonna go. But they're gonna be far enough apart so that we can easily solder the separate wires to them. Go ahead and separate three of the wires from the other two. These are gonna be for the RGB lines. The other two are going to be for a sink and then for five volts. Oops, we probably should start with the sink wire. So go ahead and separate the next wire. And then we'll have to look at the tech wiki to see which pin is for C-Sync. For this console, it's gonna be pin 42. And we'll go ahead and add some solder to the area and solder the sink wire to the sink pin. There we have sink soldered to pin 42. Now it's time to solder these RGB wires, but if you take a look at the mod itself, actually RGB here on the mod is flipped compared to the pins on the VDP. We're gonna have to put a 90 degree bend in this cable so that the RGB wires are actually flipped over. Okay, something like that. Let's go ahead and trim these wires, tin them up, and solder them to RGB. Not the best job in the world, but I think I got them soldered in there. All right, this last wire is for five volts, but we're gonna hold off on him right now. Let's go ahead and solder the wires up here. Because of the way we set up the wires down below, these wires are gonna go in the order of the pads here from left to right. So five volts, sync, R, G, and B. So let's go ahead and cut this off right about here. Maybe a little longer. Before we do anything, actually, let's go ahead and tin these points. And we're just gonna kind of feather these wires in one at a time from left to right, going from bottom to top. And here's what mine looks like. Shout out to Ben Fong because he uses this technique and I think it's really awesome and it does a really nice neat job of keeping all the wires kind of neatly put together. But let's go ahead and do the five volts before we forget it. We're gonna be getting five volts from this right voltage regulator here. The rightmost pin is the five volt regulated output. Go ahead and separate this five volts. We're gonna kind of sneak it in here, cut it to length, tin that leg and solder it on. That's all the wiring for the RGB part of the bypass. Now let's go ahead and talk about the audio. I wanna preface this next part by saying I'm not a Genesis expert, but I believe that there are two main ways that you can handle doing the audio in a Model 1. The audio amp in the triple bypass is supposed to emulate a Model 1's audio. Why would I have to do the audio bypass in a Model 1? I'm pretty sure that you really don't have to. If you were to take the audio from the headphone, like I did before, that mod that went to the front of the console, and be able to wire them up here into the new DIN that we soldered for this triple bypass. And with that method, I don't think you'd have to do anything else to have audio hooked up to the the triple bypass. But the other way, and the way that I'm gonna do it, is actually more similar to how you would do this in a Genesis Model 2. By desoldering some capacitors on the board and then wiring the audio wires from the triple bypass board to those points underneath the capacitors that we desolder. I'm not 100% sure if that results in better or worse audio compared to just the stock Model 1's audio from the headphones. But since that's a more complicated install, I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Another thing I wanna mention is with a Model 2, you can go to the Mega Amp installation instructions and find all the points that you need to solder to the triple bypass in a Model 2 in order to get audio. If you go to the Mega Amp installation instructions and look for a Model 1, you'll see that there's only instructions for a VA7 console. So if you've got a VA7, go to the Mega Amp installation instructions and look how to install from there. But I'm pretty sure if you have any other version, your capacitors are gonna look something like this. And in that case, I think you can follow along with what I'm gonna do. The first thing we've gotta do is get rid of all of these capacitors here. 
If you're curious, I'm getting the details of what wires I'm gonna solder where from Firebrand X's M1 Mini Mega installation guide. I'll leave a link to that too, so that you'll be able to see which wire on the mod is gonna to go to which capacitor down here. That being said, we're gonna need a seven wire piece of ribbon cable. We're gonna start out by soldering these wires up here on the mod. We're gonna keep these wires kind of centrally located and cut them and fan them out, sort of similar to how we did over here. Kind of like that. And the last thing we have to do is separate each one of these wires and solder them on to the points that go on these capacitors here. Firebrand X's installation guide has circles around each of the pads that you need to solder to. That's everything wired up, but before we test this out, give this video a like if it helped you out and get subscribed for more modding installation videos. I love doing these mods and showing you guys how to do them. Let's go test this console out. After doing the triple bypass in this Model 1, I don't see any more jail bars. And after doing the research, I don't think it's that much harder to do than the triple bypass in the Model 2. I think that the information is kind of scattered for the Model 1. If you're going to the retro RGB site to look up how to do the Model 1, you won't find all the information about how to do the audio. I talked to Tian Fang on Twitter about it, and he had showed me that tutorial by Firebrand X that actually shows all the capacitors you have to solder to. Again, I hope this video helped you out, and I'll see you in the next video. Huh? <laughs>